go to darkroomsupport.com, I have our help center and right down here. This was actually where the video will be posted to. And then we have um, kind of uh, something that follows along what we'll be talking about. So because we only have an hour together, uh, I have additional uh, articles going over the same stuff we're talking about a little bit more in depth. So um, first thing, I'm going to actually use this as uh, to try to stay on track. Um, okay, so the first thing is downloading um, Darkroom Core. Um, anybody can download it at any time. Um, it's, you just need an activation code or a dongle to um, activate it. So you go to darkroomsupport.com, and this is how, where you download it and um, also update it. So if you're on 9.3, you would just install the latest build of 9.3, which is available right here. And I'm working on a uh, beta version that's very similar, um, but I'll show you how you can check your version number so you can compare it and make sure that you're on the latest build. So we are on currently on 9.3, but uh, we do know there are quite a few users still using 9.2. It's a good idea to update, um, but um, you can, uh, even if you're on 9.2, you want to be on the latest build of 9.2, which we also have uh, right here. So you click back. And if you're curious on what's available in 9.3, I've added uh, the features, the, uh, a feature list with uh, guides on how to use them so you can see what's in there and how it works. Uh, and that's all right here under the 9.3 downloads. So I'm going to go ahead and open core. So when you launch it, I, I have mine set up ask for a password, which is not available in core, but every so often somebody will get uh, run into this issue. This is something that we need to help you with. Uh, and this comes from Darkroom Pro that has users. So that's the difference why you, uh, I have a uh, password and it's because I use it both of them back and forth on the same computer. So um, if you click on the question mark, and we're just talking about installing and being on the latest build. Um, yes, I, uh, I have a question. It will be recorded and it will be posted to that page that we just uh, talked about. So if we click on the question mark in the top right corner, it'll let us know what, uh, what build we currently have installed. And you just compare it and see where you are and then download uh, the latest build um, to uh, make sure it works as, as good as possible. Um, so that is uh, downloading and updating. You can also get a little bit of information about your system and what you have on it by going to system info. It'll let you know whether you're currently licensed, when your maintenance plan expired, if you're on version 9.3, and we haven't gotten to it yet, but the maintenance plan is going to be similar to how um, Booth works. That you download uh, or you purchase the software, and you get a year of updates from that purchase date. And then after that, you can uh, renew your maintenance plan or continue using that build. So um, right now, I'm using a dongle, and that's uh, some uh, how things used to work, where there was a little USB key. If you're using uh, a key on, let's say, 9.1, 9.2, uh, and you upgrade to 9.3, you'd continue using that, uh, that dongle. Um, if you purchase it new from a website, uh, you would get an activation code. So small differences in between the two. Um, nice thing about activation code, if your computer is... Uh, let's say stolen, you can deactivate it and install it on a new computer. We're not able to replace lost or stolen dongles. Nice thing about dongle is you can unplug it from one computer, plug it into another one without having to deactivate and reactivate. So uh, positives for both. So that is kind of the licensing. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the different tabs. Uh, uh, reset darkroom core to make it as similar as possible to 
uh, what you would get when you first install it. So, and we'll kind of build from there. So uh, when you first open it, it'll open to the photo library. And this is where you're going to um, organize and uh, store your images. Um, so you kind of think of these as folders. These are catalogs and you have the option of um, uh, using folders, but we would recommend importing the catalogs. And the reason for that is that um, previews are cached. So when you work through hundreds or thousands of photos, everything works just a lot uh, smoother and uh, uh, snappier because they have cached previews versus a folder every time you select an image, it has to regenerate a preview. And that's why Darkroom is able to work so quickly because they, they're working on not the actual pixels, but preview files. So that's why it's able to move so quickly. So um, there are a few different options that you have with organization. You can change uh, the default is going to be by type. You can set, set by um, date. So if you didn't want it to say events, you can... Um, uh, change the view type alphabetical. So um, let's see, let me switch back to type just because that's what most people are most familiar with. Other thing is uh, right here by default, this is hidden. I always like to open it up and, and uh, see my my packages so I can print from straight from the photo library. Um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And then um, one of the first things I always do is right here under view, right click and view, um, file names. There are also some different view options here. Um, whoops, not that one. Um, file name list, view. So, um, there, uh, and then let me see where my thumbnail is probably hit. And then right up here, sorry, I have a little bar at the top that kind of blocks some things. That's why I'm keeping it a little bit lower. Um, so I can adjust the thumbnail size right here. So if I uh, am just going by file names or if I want to see a larger preview, let me switch that path off. So um, that's kind of just the view. We're going to create a new catalog. And um, one small thing a lot of people will do is whenever they create a new catalog, it'll uh, prompt for an import. That's this option right here. You can uncheck that so it doesn't automatically try to import. So click new, photo catalog, and Let's set it as an event and demo. And for right now, I'm going to just leave this information the same. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, photo reflect and electricity. Um, we have some additional options. Um, and that's where th this comes a little bit more into play. But I'm just creating a catalog. And it's okay that it thinks I'm in Alabama. Um, click finish. So I have my catalog created. Let's go ahead and um, so there are a couple options for importing images. We're going to talk about tethering in just a little bit. You can click add photo and then browse or um, let's um, put the thumb on. So I'm going to click import all. Um, that's fine. And it's going to import those images and make uh, smaller previews. And you'll see that it takes just a little bit at first when you're first uh, creating, um, when it's first creating those previews. Um, one small trick that uh, I really like, you have this orientation um, option right there. 
but you can also uh, hold down Alt and just click, click on the top of the photo and that will rotate it. So let's say that one's supposed to be that way. You just click on the top photo. So that's uh, kind of a neat option. Um, so there are images, um, and we're gonna make a, uh, another event, and I'm gonna show you another way to import. Create a new catalog, demo GS for green screen. We're gonna go over just a little bit of green screen. I have a folder of images. I can also drag into Darkroom and it'll ask if I want to import. And it'll essentially do the same thing. Now, something a little bit even, uh, let's say you're using a different software that's kind of putting everything together for you and organizing it before you go into Darkroom. And it creates subfolders for, let's say it's a, a school. And then it creates a subfolder for every kid. Um, you can drag in that school folder and it'll create a sub catalog for every uh, every kid. So that's kind of helpful. And the example uh, is um, sports or school right here. Am I missing? Oh, here here we go. Under school, they have uh, a school. Then they have sub catalog uh, for a uh, spring dance. So that's an example of how you can have those sub catalogs. So um, let's go ahead and move. You can, um, you can print directly from here. If I had an eight by 10 printer connected, I can uh, click that and then place the order. We're gonna go ahead and skip that because most people will actually work from the photo workshop. Um, before we move move on, uh, if anybody has any questions uh, about what we co we've covered so far, so the main thing looks like we're um, event photographers. Montages. Um, so I'll see if I can throw in uh, gear more towards event photography. Um, but uh, once again, we're in our uh, now we're in our photo workshop. This is where you would do a, uh, your editing. We are going to cover creating packages in just a moment. Half of uh, uh, what we're going to be doing today is going to be focused on. Um, packages and templates, because that's really where you, you get the, uh, the automation from. So we will cover packages and templates in the second half. Um, so once again, I like seeing my um, file names. And if, uh, if you're using like a barcode scanner, and I have a guide for that uh, on our website, um, you can click F2 and then type in, let's say, uh, part of the file name. Let's say 873. I see that image right there. Oh, I have multiple images with 873. Um, but the, uh, you can do uh, a, uh, a scan. Let me try that again. We're going for um, F2 0873. Should pull up a different image. So that's real helpful whenever you're using pre-printed barcodes or your uh or even printing a barcode to um let's say you take a picture and it prints out a receipt you hand somebody a receipt and then later they go to the sales station um so just kind of want to go over that a little bit um the next thing i always turn on are my guides and the guides are real helpful and what I would do is I would try to avoid using this option because uh, let's say I'm printing uh, um, do, do, 
Uh, five by seven is one event. Forget to change it, and then I go to four by sixes. Um, now, if I try printing a four by six, I can't see any issues, but right here I can see that there's going to be a white line. So um, I would set your aspect to always to auto and then use the guides on cropping. And um, so you can add something to the cart, readjust it, and then click on the thumbnail to update what's actually going to print. So um, let's go ahead and um, save that order. And um, I'm going to place, let me see, there's one more small thing I want to show you in here. We're going to come back to the photo workshop once we have templates and packages built. But you have uh, an option for multiple, multiple view. And where this can be helpful is in batch corrections. Um, so you can see I switched them all to black and white, or uh, and those were actually black and white images, so they won't switch back to color. Um, or um, scale. So if, let's say, you had two photographers, one shoot, was shooting uh, a little bit wider than the other, you can select all their images and just uh, zoom them all in um, for that one photographer. So um, we created that order and it should now be in our new orders. And there it is. Um, this, is, uh, this will help keep track of everything. You can have it set to auto print. So if I had a printer connected, which I will in just a moment, um, it will, uh, it would have, if I placed the order rather than saved it, it would have just started auto printing. But this is real helpful to see what you're doing. Um, and if you run into an issue, you can always look right here and adjust the image. You can update the file. Let's say uh, you have um, somebody changes their mind after they've placed the order. You can then go in and make some changes. Um, and what's really nice about this area is it's going to show you how, it, uh, how it's going to crop the photo as it prints. So if you have 5 by 7 8 by 10 uh, 4 by 6 sizes, um, you can see where each one's going to crop and then adjust it specifically for the output. And it's a good way to double check if you're using multiple workers, um, like somebody's entering orders and somebody's uh, printing them. So um, we'll go ahead and save that. And just quickly, I'm going to jump into pro services and uh, photo presentation. Um, this is where you can upload to PhotoReflect. Uh, you can check out PhotoReflect.com and sign up for an account there. And that allows you to sell online. So if you're doing event photography, you can actually get some additional sales. Let's say you don't offer prints, but you just offer specialty products. And it uh, gives you just a little extra money for an event. And then Labtricity is um, an option to print sizes that you don't actually offer or that you're not able to offer. So let's say I wanted to print out uh, a 24 by 36 and I didn't have that size printer, I can send it to a lab and they can fulfill it. Um, and, or if I wanted to print like specialty product, like a mug or ornament or a photo tile, those are all, um, options that a lot of labs offer. So there's multiple labs and you can find one within your local area. Um, and uh, this is actually how I got into Express Digital, which became Darkroom was, uh, I was with a beta lab whenever they were first trying it out back in 2003. So I've been working with it for a while. So this is kind of cool. And I'll make a uh, new video uh, coming out pretty soon going over photo reflect and electricity for our knowledge base. I'm going to skip the setup tab because that's where we're going to spend uh, a good part of our time and go into the uh, photo presentation. So there are two different modes. Uh, the, um, there's a dark mode, which is for weddings and studio. And then uh, 
this blue mode that's uh, geared more for event photography. So you can uh, capture images and then have um, a computer working as a sales kiosk. And this is kind of neat. Um, uh, the uh, studio mode, let me see if I can switch over to that one just so you can see um, the difference. Um, it has a different theme and there are uh, slight differences in the functionality. Um, and right here, um, one of the cool things about this that I really like was you can um, display your images. Uh, let me see. Choose um, room previews. So you can show uh, what it would look like and then uh, in a room, but um, you can also use a projector so people can see the actual sizes. So for you studio photographers. Okay, so you can play around with that a little bit more um, and you have quite a few more controls on how those respond and how they look uh, in your workflow settings. And these two, for just general, these, uh, these two guys right here are where most of the preferences that you're gonna wanna change are gonna be. So if you only wanna use a studio presentation mode, you can change it here for all, uh, for um, your event photography or vice versa if you or you uh, only want to use uh, event presentation mode. Um, uh, but right here, these options, um, adding default package and fill, uh, fill package with current photo. Um, I typically will not use the add default package and I'll check the option for fill, fill package with current photo. Um, let me see, we have a studio catalog. So let's, I'm going to show you what that looks like. If you've ever seen where you start up the software and it always has this little square and you have to delete it first, that is the add default package. Um, if we, um, let me see, did I not check it? Maybe I did something wrong. But um, if you ever run into an issue where it doesn't, it adds the package, but not with the photo and you have to drag the photo in, that's gonna be this option right here, fill package with current photo. And these are set up for those three different options, whether it's studio catalog, you meant catalog, or uh, working from Windows folders. Um, and then this uh, guy right here, it's good to kind of look through and look at your different options. But um, personally, I always check uh, uncheck prompt for copies. Um, I, I, I don't do large groups. So um, now this might be different for you, but um, if I'm printing two or three, I just click the package multiple times. So uh, prompt for copies, um, but kind of look through these different options and see, uh, maybe you don't want to see the template marketplace whenever you're, um, you're browsing. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So here's the template marketplace. Let's say you didn't want to have that and you just want to see your own borders, you can uncheck that. So those are all different little um, uh, preferences that you can change there. So um, let's see, we've got six minutes left and we uh, next on our list is um, adding, I might say six minutes before halftime and we'll take just a small break. Uh, we're gonna add a printer, we're gonna add a camera. Um, and Darkroom makes this real easy, so I'm not worried about time there. First, we'll go ahead and um, add my Canon camera. And it looks a little bit different, 9.3, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on real quick. And then click, uh, click detect camera. And you can see it's already detected. I don't have to check uh, the option for the camera anymore at 9.3. Um, and for the printer, let's go ahead and uh, I have it plugged in. I don't have it turned on. I 
don't have it plugged in. Hold on. Okay, now it is plugged into power. It's plugged in via USB. So setting up a, a printer, and I'm using a, a DS40. Um, is this easy? I choose my printer. And it sees it's detected, and I have 4 by 6 media inside of it. So uh, printer and camera are both um, detected and working. So a good thing to do is let's test them out. We'll go ahead and take a picture. And I can uh, um, take a picture using the shutter release button. Let me see if I can try that. I don't know how focus is going to work. but Or I can use the take photo button. But it's importing in. And from here, I can click add print product. And we're gonna we're gonna make packages in just a second, so this is kind of the long way. Um, so that's one way I can do it. I can also uh, let me see, drag from there, and it'll pull up the same um, options. I'm gonna clear this order, and. Just do that one picture. Okay. And if I click place order, um, it should automatically print. So set up for a printer and camera uh, as easy as it could possibly be. And uh, we'll go over... Uh, auto print in just a second. Like I said, most of the setup, uh, the, the actual where darkroom really shines is in the setup to make it easier for whenever you're actually working. So, um, I'm uh, going to add another, okay, so uh, under photographer info, I already have my Gmail account. I'm going to remove that so we can do it uh, together. I'm going to click. Hold on, let me pull up my Gmail account. So I want to set it to what you guys would more than likely run into if you're setting up for the first time. Um, Okay, so adding a Gmail account, email. Um. Okay, and it auto filled out the rest of the information. If I click test, it's going to tell me my outgoing connection has failed. Um, and the reason for that, and a lot of, it, we're talking about Gmail, but this is the same for uh, a lot of uh, email accounts. Okay. So under, uh, my Gmail account and my security settings, right down here, there's an option, less secure apps, and it's set to off. That should be set to on. If you have two-step verification turned on, you won't be able to uh, access this option. So you'll want to go ahead and make sure that two-step verification 
is off and less secure apps access is on. And then test and now it's connected. So that's something if you're using Gmail, you'll run into. Uh, Yahoo Mail has a new option um, uh, that's a little bit different. And if you go to darkroomsupport.com and type in, I don't know if I've added it. There's a video coming out or just came out um, that goes over Yahoo Mail, which has app password, which is pretty cool. Um, I actually really like the way that works. But uh, every different uh, email account is going to be a little bit different. So you might need to um, check with your, uh, your provider. So um, I think we're doing good on time. Do we have any questions before we get into packages and templates? I'm, I'm sorry, I know I'm going quickly, um, but this will be available online uh, if, you, if anybody needs to go back and watch it in like half speed. Okay, so um, the last question was about packages. Um, those packages are the default ones and they're based off of an eight by 10 uh, printer, which was a lot more common back in the day. Uh, most of you guys are gonna be using um, your four by six, five by seven, six by eight and nine printer. Um, the, uh, but uh, another printer, if you're not using, uh, if you're looking for larger sizes, uh, DX100 is an awesome uh, printer um, for those larger sizes. Uh, DS820, uh, uh, um, we're not really gonna go into the, the bigger size, but um, let's uh, look at our printers. Um, So these are directly supported printers, and this is what I would recommend for um, working with printers. You can add a Windows printer. So I have um, a receipt printer, and that I would add it via uh, Windows. I have a Epson 24-inch printer, and I would do that via Windows printers. Um, and I have guides for for those. So we're going to uh, get into packages. And um, here's a standard package. You can kind of see how they're built. Um, you have multiple package groups. Oops. Um, I'm gonna create a new group and it's gonna be event packages. And in that group, um, let's say I primarily do four by six. Um, and um, if we can go back to that quick print in just a moment, I'll show you. That's typically how I set up for an event. Um, we have our container, and there's our four by six. So we can also have um, a package that's two four by sixes, and I can uh, add um, two here, or I can, another way to add the same thing. Well, actually what we'll do is we'll change this into a two four by sixes and a five by seven. Just so you can see why you might want to add it. Uh, so, you have multiple um, print items within a single package. Um, so uh, let's, I'm gonna just change this back to one. And there are a whole bunch of different ways to do the same thing. Um, uh, let's see. Let's say, this is actually gonna be a lot more common, four by six and email. So um, I'm gonna set this to quick print and what that's gonna do is it's gonna bypass the shopping cart completely and it's gonna go straight to the printer. 
And it's telling me I don't have a, a cost, and that's fine. If you want to associate a cost and use receipts, uh, you can. Um, I'm going to add my 4 by 6 And then click Add Local Print Item. Whoops. Let's go with Digital Delivery. OK. So um, one thing, um, let's go back to this, because this one I just kind of showing you what you might do, but this is not a very good uh, example of a package. Nobody's really going to print a 4 by 6 and a 5 by 7 You might print a, uh, because of the aspect ratio, and typically you need two different printers. Um, you have, uh, what you might do is, um, a five by seven and four wallets. So that's a little bit more realistic. And we can double click on it. We can add, let's say $20 and we could set this one for quick print as well. Um, the a la carte would be, let's say you have um, a t-shirt. This is a pretty good example. Um, where you have a package, it's a t-shirt, and you have different sizes for each one, medium, large, extra large, kids. Um, and then you can choose from that list. So that's where the a la carte comes in kind of. Um, so uh, I have a seven. So there's that package, and that's set up for a five by seven printer. Um, one more option to where you'd get essentially the same thing would be, let's say you're using an eight by 10 printer. You can do, uh, let me see in here is five by seven and four wallets. Essentially the same thing, it just prints out an eight by 10. So like I was saying, a lot of different ways to um, do the same thing. Okay. And one thing that I wanted to skip was uh, under our receipt options. Let, let me show you. Um, oh, so uh, changing your package group. If you go right here, there's event packages. I click and then place order, and it shows me this receipt. I want to skip that. Let's go ahead and go back to our setup tab. Um, under fulfillment options, receipt options, uncheck show confirmation receipt. Now I'll send it directly to the printer. So and we've, we've seen, uh, we'll go ahead and click place order and it should print. And I'm actually going to switch over to some. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, so uh, I just changed over just so I can uh, get pictures I prefer rather than pictures of me. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, so we had a question. Um, one time you could capture photos from your computer. If, uh, the camera has to be detected. If it's not detected, then it won't show this option right here. Same with live view. So um, that's the option. If the camera is not uh, detected, it won't be there. There are certain things that will turn on whenever it senses uh, a connected device. Um, so uh, the, uh, I had a question saying that they weren't able to see the, I believe it's the take photo button. Um, so, oh, quick print. So we have this one. This one set as quick print. If we go ahead and click on that, it's going to ask me for my email address. And it's going to print and email at the same time. So, um, That is using uh, one package with multiple items 
Um, you could also uh, add one more thing to that, just in case. Uh, it's always good to have a backup. Um, packages. Um, for the, that camera question, uh, it, it, you'll want to email support and they can look into it a little bit further and see what might be going on. Um, so we have our 4x6 and our email. Let's say we also wanted to save to that folder right there every time we print. We click Add Local Print Item, Digital Delivery, and... Uh, digital media that's a good question uh, Paul um, the I'll, I'll show you those options in just a second so um, and this kind of it should kind of clear it up if you double click on the option it'll pull up the different options for file size output uh, had the question of um, how you would uh, determine the size so um, we're gonna go destination and on my desktop. What do I call it? Prints. There it is. So every time I print or whenever I print with this package specifically, it's gonna add a uh, image to that folder right there. And I can set the preview size, medium, full size, or a custom if I needed. Um, and I can also output with a template um, so, um, let's go ahead and do that, because uh, templates are, are where we're going next. Mm. And let's do green screen. I'm going to just use this one right now. So I want to output to this folder with the template, and um, I have the same options right here for file size. and template so green screen and then always use a template so let's switch over our catalog to this one and I there are two different ways you can use a template I can um, select the template and see what it's going to look like and then adjust the image so for this image it's a little off center that's pretty helpful um, go ahead and click four by six and place order that one does not is not set up as quick print and then on this one, let's see, we're going to turn this, uh, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I'm going to click the N key um, to turn the template off, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and I'm going to click on this package, and we'll, we're going to see something a little bit different happen. one's automatically going to print. So here's the one that we just did. And we have another one. And you can see the template was turned off, but the template's added here. So if we look in our uh, prints folder, yeah. Apparently, I had a Prince folder already. So there is the one with the uh, where it automatically applied the template. Um, so uh, that is. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of a cropping issue, and how we can test that. And this is a perfect reason uh, to go into our templates to see why that might happen. Green screen. This template is sized for a 
eight by 10 and this is a four by six, so aspect ratio is different. And that's why we're getting a little bit of cropping. So uh, and this is a, a really good template to look at to see how templates are made. You have a, uh, a background, you have your image node or placeholder and uh, sandwiched in between uh, an overlay graphic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build uh, a template from scratch. And what I like to do is I like to create a new group separate from the sample borders and I call it my templates. Oops. And, whoops, I did that wrong. We're gonna click on templates right here and then new group, my templates. Uh, so that it's not a subgroup in the sample templates. So it's our own separate group. Um, we're gonna create a, um, four by six um, with logo. And I'm not sure what that is. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Four by six. We're gonna type in number. Um, by, uh, you can create an identical template that's four by six and one that's uh, horizontal or vertical and one that's horizontal. And I'll see if I can show you that in really uh, real quick after we build this one. So um, we're going to add a photo. That's what's gonna accept the photo. And then we're gonna add a graphic. And let's see, I think I have a, whoops. Looking for something called backgrounds. There we go. Let me add that PNG logo saved with transparency. And um, we're going to save it as a new border. And this is how I recommend saving your templates. And there's a very, very good reason for this. Um, save it to your X drive under templates borders and then create a new folder my templates and I'm just matching what we have inside uh, in darkroom that that structure that we built there um, and the reason why we're saving an X drive is uh, your X drive holds your packages and also holds your, uh, your photos so if you buy a new computer um, you, all you have to do is move over your X drive and everything moves with it. Your templates you can store anywhere, but if you move the X drive, you might leave your templates behind or some of those graphics. Um, and it's actually a good idea to copy this graphic into that folder as well and add it from that folder. Otherwise, the graphics are missing. So I kind of made a mistake there. Um, yeah, what we'll do is we'll, we'll fix that. We'll do that right. I want to show you guys the right way to do everything. Okay. Copy X templates. You can use overlay graphics, textures. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm about to show you something that matches with what you're asking, Larry, um, about using uh, overlays. Okay, so paste and we're gonna go ahead and save that. Open it back up, double click on this and we can browse to that other location but uh, I copied the, um, the location so it should update it. So you can do it the long way and go through browse and then find it through that but um, so there's our 4x6 logo we'll go ahead and save 
And I'm going to show you uh, the same thing on, with horizontal, and there's a reason for that in just a second. Um, we're going to double click, change H O R Z, and four by six horizontal. We can uh, click on this guy, make same, uh, oh, fill entire page. And then we're going to move our graphic up. I'm using my arrow keys. And you can hold down control to move something faster or shift, and it'll move in half increments, double increments versus half increments. That's control and shift. Um, and then save as new border. OK, so uh, we're going to create a new. Uh, package group and uh, logo prints and local print item Oop. four by six and I'm going to apply it doesn't matter actually which template we do. And let's go to our photo workshop and change our package group to my logo prints. Um, let's find. Okay. So here's a. Um, a horizontal image. I'm going to click package one. And it's hard to see, but you can see there's a logo right there. And then I'm going to choose a vertical image and package one. And you can see that it automatically chose the right package uh, or the right template based on the orientation of the photo. I'm going to save the order so you can see it a little better so you know that I am not uh, making stuff up. That's pretty cool. So you can shoot vertical, horizontal. And this uh, um, should also work the same for auto print. And we'll talk about auto print. I know we're running out of time, but auto print, because we have some, uh, it sounds like most of your event photographers, I want to go over uh, uh, auto print. That's pretty neat. Okay, so um, let's go back to our templates. My templates. Um, We'll create a new, let's say, five by seven mm, vertical. And sports. So add photo. Um, Let's cancel that. I'm going to show you first how to add a background. Um, so we added a overlay before. We're going to click add graphic. And I'm not going to, oh, yeah, I, I need to be good and do it the right way. So um, let's see. Open up a diff. Come on. Um, okay, da, 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 see. pictures, so we're copying those graphic files into the, uh, into the X drive so they're not left behind when we upgrade. Um, we'll go with this guy right here just for fun. Um, using that as a background. And um, let's go with that. Oh, I'm holding down control whenever I'm copying something so it's not moving the file. That's just Windows stuff, but that's helpful. Okay, so I think that's a back. No, this one's the background. And we just zoom in a little bit. 
And then we'll add our photo. And if it's green screen, we're gonna choose this option right here. And we can add a, um, another graphic. And uh, so this might be that uh, texture. You can add a whole bunch of layers I've seen. I, I, I've filled this, this up. Uh, now, the more graphics you add, the slower it's going to be. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. The higher resolution of the graphics, uh, the slower. Um, so trying to stick with the size at 300 dpi is a good idea. If you can merge graphics rather than having um, four different background graphics and then 20 different uh, foreground graphics, if you can merge them to be a background and a foreground, that's going to be helpful for uh, processing. But there's our, I forgot what size I made that. It's probably eight, eight by 10. Um, and then I'm going to click on uh, add text. And so we have special text here where you can pull stuff from the information. We're not going to necessarily use that. Um, I can type in my name and it's going to show up. I could do better than that. Um, And let's say white, drop shadow. Let's see what that looks like. Do I have soft drop shadow? Let's see if that looks a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. So. And then uh, whenever I add an image, I can update that. Um, let's go ahead and click um, save a new border. Um, so switch back to green screen. Select like this template. And okay. so you can double click on the text. Uh, one more small uh, thing we can get into. You can have placeholder text. I think we probably need to make that a little bit smaller to fit in somebody's um, full name. Save changes. And now when you off B. Oh, it's not set to prompt, but if I click T, I can then pop in, uh, update the name, and then go next person and there's Benji. So that's templates. Uh, we can probably spend like an hour in templates and packages. You can see where this becomes really, really powerful. Um, the uh, we. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, auto print. Let's see if my camera is still detected. Yeah, it's still detected. So after each photo, we'll go ahead and check that. Click that. Um, select a four by six. Um, and let's also just for fun, we'll do a email. And I can predefine the email. So if I have a customer that's hired me to do an event and they want to have a image emailed to them every time, um, it 
it will automatically email the image whenever it's captured. It won't prompt me for a, uh, a um, email address and it should automatically print. We'll double click here and make sure we have our package. Um, and so now um, I'm going to um, click end to remove that package. Um, and if I were a photographer, somebody steps in front of the green screen, I take a picture, it would then, well, let's try it out and click take photo. It's going to take a picture with me and uh, you can see how quick and responsive this should all be. So essentially the operator, all they have to do is be a photographer and take a picture. There's the print and it emailed, uh, it would have emailed me a copy as well. So there's a lot of information. I hope everybody has uh, enjoyed it and it wasn't too fast. But once again, everything will be available um, at uh, darkroomsupport.com. And then let's see. Uh, Darkroom core, scroll down to the very bottom. Right here we have webinars. The video will be right here. Here's information on um, the uh, kind of what we went over. I tried to stay as close to this as possible. Uh, also some additional stuff that's just kind of fun that I, I personally like and I think that you guys would get a lot of uh, benefit out of having some tips and tricks. Um, Additional resources like the Facebook group. They, they have one for a darkroom booth. There's also one for Core Edition. And um, there's a link to the support page, which you're already on. So you really don't need this, but always just remember it's darkroomsupport.com. Uh, and I'm available 24 7 virtually through that. Uh, uh, for later retouching instead of. Print. Yes. Yeah, you can output to a file rather than adding a four by six. You have it set to. Um, but uh, yeah, now is the time to ask questions. I'll be with you guys for for a little bit longer, just so we can kind of get through it. But um, this is the page. This will be. Uh, this video will be here, and you can rewatch it um, as many times as you want. And uh, but I have links for that go a little bit further. A little bit slower uh, but more in depth so um, retouching that's something we didn't we did not even go over um, let's see um, I don't need to retouch a picture of my kids because they're already perfect but let's see um, Let me see. I'm trying to see if I have an image with maybe part of a background. Oh, yeah. There is one with Penny where it shows a light. Okay. So um, right here you can see um, the uh, softbox. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger. A lot of people don't know that uh, we have retouching built into Core Edition. Um, you can retouch in Photoshop. I'm going to show you something uh, that I like doing. Let's go ahead and open Photoshop. I'll show you a different method for that. So I leave my retouching uh, set to work with uh, Darkroom, even though I, I love Photoshop. Um, let's burn in, see if we can get rid of eh, maybe we can just paint in And it looks like I can't. That's probably yeah. That's on my screen. I thought <laughs> I thought there was going to be something I could retouch out. But uh, we have our our, our our brush, our lasso. Um, some of the tools we're more familiar with Photoshop. You know what? I know what we can do that will be fun. Um,
we'll choose this image. Um, we can do uh, color accents. So this used to be done, uh, people would do a uh, black and white photo and then color hand retouch or hand color. So that's something built into the dark room. Um, um, so one uh, small thing that I'd recommend is uh, if you're gonna do this, do multiple small strokes rather than like one just real long stroke, dark room handles it a little bit better that way. Um, but uh, there's blemish removal. So if you're photographing uh, high school kids, um, you can go and help them with some of that. Um, we'll save as new. And um, so let's say I want to retouch something in Photoshop. I can just drag it straight into Photoshop. And let's say we're just going to make it a negative. Now, whenever I switch back, I'm saving over the file because this is a duplicate. I don't have to worry about ruining my original. Now, when I switch back to Darkroom, Darkroom is sourcing that file that I've updated, and it's been updated in Darkroom. So that's quick retouching in Photoshop. I'll switch it back and then save. That is uh, why I always leave it set to retouch in Darkroom and then I have the option to go into uh, retouch in Photoshop. And I keep looking over here, even though this, this is where you guys are talking to me and there you guys are right there. But uh, anybody have uh, any other questions? Can you please elaborate when? Um, so a question about lighting, um, the, uh, one thing that, uh, um, this one's kind of a hard one because it could be a lot of different things. Uh, and it's properly lit and with a light meter when it's photographed. So we know it should be, it should be accurate. Um, and then dark room, it's, uh, darker. So if you're using a light meter, I'm guessing that you kind of know your stuff um, lighting wise. Um, and typically those are the type of people that are going to shoot in a uh, different color space. So um, you can uh, um, adjust your, your working space in darkroom to match the, the, the camera. Um, it should be right over here under color balance. Um, color profile. So um, let's say you're shooting in pro photo, uh, RGB or Adobe 1998, or let's say you're editing in another program. That's typically where I see it, that, that the actual color space, they shoot in raw color space is different once it comes to darkroom. And that would be the way to adjust it. Um, you can also get in calibrating your monitor, but usually your monitor is going to be brighter than the, uh, the image so it wouldn't go dark, but that might be something kind of more uh, for support to troubleshoot. Uh, but a lot of different things could be going on there. But my best guess, uh, it's probably a profile issue. And if we don't have any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, once again, it's going to be available online. This video will be. And I appreciate everybody for coming and hanging out with me. Thanks again for watching. If there's a topic that you want to learn a little bit more about, be sure to comment below, like, subscribe, and click the little notification bell so when we, we release a new video, I'll let you know. Here's some other videos you might like. Most importantly, thanks for being a customer. I'll see you next time.